So after I read this essay, I sort of composed my thoughts <laughs> in my brain and on in text, and I shared a post on Facebook, shared a couple posts on Facebook about it, um, and I can put the links to those in the description here as well. But basically at the end of my my little essay in response to everything, um, I'd kind of come to a bit of a resolution for myself that my way of separating art from artist was to refer to the public persona as Joe Rowling. And then the person who wrote these books all those years ago is J.K. Rowling. And I saw a video that one of the one of the actresses who was in the Very Potter musical Star Kid Productions, she posted her own kind of response to all the J.K. Rowling stuff. And one of the conclusions that she drew in that video, and I'll, I'll link it below because I think it's a good watch, was that the J.K. Rowling who wrote the books was this struggling single mother who was just trying to make ends meet and was writing from a place of, you know, she kind of needed to escape into this world as well. And I think that's why it speaks to so many people who need that escapism, particularly people in the queer community who feel ostracized from a lot of society. One of the things that is so deeply upsetting to me about all of this is that I think that J.K. Rowling had and, and probably still has a lot of queer fans who looked up to her and when she started posting these things <sighs> I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of support in my friend groups and my family but a lot of people who are struggling with whether or not they should come out they don't have anybody that they can trust and you escape into books and movies and other things because you feel like you see parts of yourself there and it's so important to be able to have that kind of escapism and then with something like Harry Potter on top of just the world itself that you can escape into it, it spawned this other world of this fandom where people were starting to meet other people who felt seen in the same way through these books. And so I think being a part of that kind of community allows people to kind of open up and claim their identity. I'm not saying that like Harry Potter necessarily is this like catalyst for people coming out. I do think that having a character like Dumbledore be canonically gay, particularly with whatever they're about to explore in the Fantastic Beast movies outside of China. I even I don't even think I'm gonna touch that right now, but it is a big deal. And I think that in a lot of ways Joe Rowling knows how big her platform is and understands the reach that her books have and have had for decades. And it's just it's so frustrating that that she knows that she has that kind of power and is using it in this way. This news about J.K. Rowling, this sort of revelation of J.K. Rowling's toxic viewpoints came out around the same time that there were new discoveries about Joss Whedon and his not-so-great behavior while he was making Buffy an Angel. And as a fan of Buffy as well, I found myself just kind of simultaneously seeing two, two writers that I had put on pedestals just be dropped. And that was hard as a, as a writer myself and as someone who just really still loves what those two series gave me. It was very hard to 
see the people who created these incredible worlds basically take on the traits of the villains basically become very similar to the big bads i see joe rowling excluding trans people from the narrative from humanity as a very umbrage move. If you look at the people in Harry Potter who are exclusionary, it's not the good guys. It's it's people like Umbridge, it's people like Voldemort, and I feel like she just, there's no way she can see that that's the case. I, I feel like she's got to have this narrative in her head that she is crusading for a cause that um, well, as I've become a little bit more world-wise in the content that I consume the past few years, um, I started listening to Susie Ruffles' podcast, Out. Highly recommend it, by the way. It's a great podcast. It's largely UK-based, so a lot of it is talking about UK politics and um, particularly the, the queer community and what they're going through over there. And after listening to several interviews on that, and particularly with um, trans and non-binary people, it became very clear to me that Joe Rowling is not in the minority in her viewpoints, and that that was also really eye-opening to, to realize that the UK is very transphobic and I mean, the US isn't doing much better. Throughout the country, several states are adopting homophobic and transphobic legislation. It's just going to harm an already vulnerable community, and particularly a vulnerable community of kids who are just trying to understand themselves and understand the world and feel valid. And as someone who had a lot of questions growing up and didn't really feel like, I didn't really feel like I could ask them because I didn't even know really what I was asking, because there's just no media out there. I mean, there's starting to be some, but not when I was a kid, you know? I I didn't... I didn't even know the term Mask of Center until last fall, when I learned it through the conversation that Lauren Patton and Shakina Nafak were doing. Didn't know that term existed, did not know what it meant. And as soon as I heard it and internalized what it meant, I was just like, well, that's me. And that's more me than any of the labels that I've been working through on this journey. It's so important to be able to talk and be able to ask questions and be able to see that there are other people out there who are like you. And not just people who are like you, but people who are thriving who are like you so that you know that you have the opportunity to thrive. And when, when authors who you've looked up to since you were a kid use their platform to denounce the reality and the existence of other people, it's, it's a lot to digest. two years beyond when these tweets first came out and it's still almost a daily struggle for me because a lot of me doesn't want Joe Rowling to win you know I don't I don't want her to be able to sap the joy that I got from 
discovering and exploring the wizarding world. I don't want her to take that away. I don't want to lose a part of me, a part of my happiest times in my childhood and adolescence. Because I learned that the person I've looked up to has some really problematic ways of looking at the world. I don't want to resent a time period that, that gave me friends, that gave me magic. So I'm still struggling, and 